All right, so I was going through a video earlier today about uh, the ins and outs of the Jeep WK. And one of the uh, things to be aware of is the uh, front differentials. So we have a selection of differentials here. These are uh, two of the three that I own. The other one is in the Jeep currently. So uh, take a look at this guy here. It's together still. And it's got a, a big cover on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten bolts on that that's the electric uh, locker that's how you detect it it's never been serviced if they have this uh, orange silicone on them it's kind of slobbery all over the place that tells you it's never been opened there's a story behind why I own this differential it's very sad we'll get to it in a minute now we have the original differential that came with my Jeep it's a little bit different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts here. Vent's pretty similar. There is no electric locker on this Jeep. So you put them up to each other. What do they have in common? They're both uh, for Jeeps. These are uh, one of the uh, bushings here that goes bad. This one's been changed. You can see a little mark where I uh, cut into the housing. But uh, those are a pain. You can get poly bushings. I don't rec recommend the OEM bushings as replacements or the doorman. Don't get the rubber replacements. They're not going to last all that long. So let's look a bit more. So this one died on me. It was really noisy after I changed this bushing. In fact, whatever I did when I changed this bushing destroyed the transmission or the uh, differential. So you look in here, there's some funny marks on this. When I changed the bushings on this differential, I just disconnected the mounts and spun it so and flipped it upside down and hung it down and worked on it. And I think that I let garbage fall into the bearing when I did that. But it's not like totally chewed up or anything. So you can just wipe it off with a sock. If you have smelly feet, this is the perfect solution. When you got gear oil on your socks, people won't know you got smelly feet anymore. So I bought some tools to disassemble this so we could take a, a closer look at it. And uh, this one here, it's a little bit different than your average differential where it actually has the bearing cups here which way they really go in they must face in like that so that it can grab onto there so you just put them in probably from the other side I just can't remember but no it'll go through but what's not really apparent is that there's no adjustment in this differential. These snap rings are all different thicknesses. If you look in the uh, parts manual, you can find a plethora of snap rings. So that's one reason why you are not going to bother servicing one of these differentials, because you're going to be down for parts waiting for these new snap rings to come in so that you can move your uh, ring gear back and forth and get it resting nice on the pinion. So that's one problem. It's not like it was totally chewed up, but man, was it ever noisy. That's probably just dirt. It's been sitting around. I did the job in the uh, winter of last year, I think. So there's these pieces here. You're going to have a, uh, a shaft on it. And this is uh, kind of the funny part of this job. So when I had this differential fail, I decided, oh, I'm gonna put an electric locker in it. So I bought a different electric locker that had like 10,000 miles on it, but had been in an accident, and they had snapped this uh, aluminum housing on it. So I'm like, all right, I'll just take the aluminum housing off of my existing one and stick it on. Well, you can't, they're not the same length. They're, I don't know if it's an inch longer or what have you, but it's different. So you can't do that, unfortunately. So then I went to another junkyard and I got this differential 
And uh, I was able to get it for a pretty good price. I told him, hey man, I just want it for parts. He's like, alright, if you want it for parts, there's no warranty. And uh, he kind of gave it to me. There's two different kinds of uh, flanges on these vehicles. You got like a conventional bolt-on flange for like a U-joint kind of job. Or you can get a flange like this. Try not to lose that off the table. And that's for uh, if you have a CV on that end of the vehicle. So I kept that. If I end up putting in this differential, I'm going to have to change this. And there's a crush washer you got to be mindful of. And you look at the pinion. Nothing readily apparent again, right? But it was, it had issues, it was noisy. I don't know what the situation is here with this, if it's supposed to be discolored or not. I noticed that the bearing that came out, it was like stuck on there like crazy. I don't know if that was uh, the cause of the whole problem or what. But whatever it was, I got taken down by this differential. That's the seal that goes in on here. You guys, see I just drove it out with the screwdriver. I wasn't trying to save it. So anyway, when you look at the pinion, it'll be stamped on the end of it. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. My hands are greasy. Bear with me, I want to show it to you. It's fighting. 3.73, that's the uh, ratio. So you can look at that when you've got the uh, differential on the shelf, so you go ahead and check that. That's important to do, make sure your front diff and your rear diff are the same uh, ratio. I think the V8s and the uh, diesel all had the same ratio, but different hubs depending. This came out of a, a gas commander, I believe. Don't quote me on the ratios though, look into that. But normally you just go in with your VIN and tell them what you got and they'll give you a differential. You don't need to tell them a whole bunch of information. So uh, when you're changing the front bushing that goes on here, take it off of here. Don't be pounding on this uh, housing because you can snap that, the big aluminum stump right off of it and then you're going to be in trouble. I think that's 14 millimeter. I did a video on how to get the fronts off of these. When you take them off, do the tops first and make sure you can get to them because they're kind of hard to get to depending on what kind of tools you have available. And obviously you check that, make sure that your filler is loose before you dump the oil out of it. All that kind of stuff you need to know about. Here's another uh, bushing that goes bad. So these things are a pain in the butt. You'll have to change that when you buy the vehicle. Other than that, like this extension housing has got three bolts holding it on. There's an O-ring around it. It just slips in on that end there. That's easy enough to do. There's another O-ring you may not notice on here. So when you put your uh, left CV shaft on, it's like a, a female and it slides over and bottoms out against that O-ring. And that keeps any uh, garbage from getting into these splines. Then there's like a, a snap ring here. This thing is a bastard. It is hard to get the uh, CV off of the uh, driver's side. Actually, I'm thinking, I got this a little bit backward. I believe this is on the passenger side. Now that I'm thinking about it, no. How can it be? Yeah, so the diff is facing forward. It's hanging off of these mounts. Yeah, so this is the passenger side. So this side isn't that big of a deal to get off of the vehicle. It's starting to rust there. It wasn't like that when I took it out. There's another snap ring on here. This is a problem if you change the housings on this differential because you it's got a really long spline section and you have to get it through like four splines and they can get clocked out of position if you're not careful and it'll drive you nuts when you're trying to get that on. So uh, be patient with that. You can't just keep hammering on the other end and thinking it's gonna fit through. 
you gotta like reach in there. I'm not gonna open it up. You gotta reach in to here and try to line up all of the uh, splines with the screwdriver and it's not easy. So if you're gonna take this off, like put it back on right away. Then uh, if you look inside, there's a seal. Then I don't know if that's like a, a bronze-ish kind of material for a bushing. So there's no bearing on the outboard side of this thing. It's just kind of hanging out on top of there. So obviously you're gonna put a bit of oil on there before you put it together. So if you're gonna take one of these differentials out, it's pretty common to damage the housing when you're trying to pull that seal out. You should buy a new seal, you should verify you haven't lost your O-ring, and slide that in. Yeah, this is the driver's side. These are very prone to getting damaged when you take the uh, driver's CV out. So uh, keep one of these on hand if you're changing your CV. And the, this side is very hard to get out for whatever reason. And they make a special tool, it's like a fork that you put on under here with a slide hammer, you can pop it out. And uh, like I said, there's been a lot of battles out in people's driveways trying to get that thing off and it's not easy to do. So get the seal. It's gonna leak after you change the CV anyway. They're not gonna match as nicely as you think. So I just go ahead and change that. You can see that whoever took this out of the vehicle smacked it. Because it's just, it'll drive you insane. So you might as well just have that available. Then this is the uh, non-slip, or sorry, non-limited slip carrier. So not much to see in there. It's a regular old differential. I don't know if it's got any writing on it or what. Bear with me. It's got to be marked on there somewhere. It's just like the factory uh, marks for trying to get it lined up. Anyway, something on the pinion gave out on me for this differential. So that kind of ruined my day with that. So I put in the electric locker. I have uh, like a switch you can turn it on and off. And it just locks it up solid, so it's only for going straight. And uh, this is going to replace the one that's in there when it blows up. I just have to be cognizant when I change uh, this. There's a crush washer right here. For setting your preload on that bearing. And be very careful with that. You don't just friggin' weld that guy on here as hard as you can because you're going to ruin this and you're going to be all out of alignment on here and that's just not right so honestly i take it to the garage when i need to get these changed or the uh the seals here like i just got my rear pinion seal done at the garage this week and I, I, honestly i paid it cost me an hour of labor but i couldn't have done it in an hour and they did it right so i'm happy with that if you ever blow out a seal you always want to take your line off of here and either replace the line or blow it out with compressed air, like not into here, but blow the line out. This goes up to your uh, right fender well up on top in the engine bay. Clean that out because normally when you blow out a seal, it's because you're, the body of the differential is uh, pressurizing and that's uh, the cause of it. So uh, these are the Jeep WK, the two options for differentials. This is a 2000... Uh, nine differential essentially and right here this nub is not drilled whereas if you look on this one it's got like a four pound cast iron block of cast iron sitting on it for uh, it's supposed to deal with uh, vibrations when you're driving down the road but they only did that for the first couple of years and then they uh, stopped doing it if you find a, a part that's got writing on it like that, that means it's come from the wrecker. That's pretty common. So, uh, oh yeah, the last thing is to get these snap rings out. I got quite a few needle on those pliers trying to get them out and I completely failed. So you need to get this Lang tool here. This thing is amazing. That guy. That's for doing the big snap rings. If you're going to do any big work on anything, you should have one of these. So this is the Model 87 snap ring tool, three and a half to seven inches. This thing is big. So uh, 
do that. Otherwise, like God for knows how many people you're going to hurt when that thing goes flying if you do get it out. But you're most likely just going to break your hands and break your knuckles and break your screwdrivers and tools and everything. Because you can't get them out without using one of these. So you'll need to get one of these. I think they're like 80 bucks or something. So, uh, thank you for watching. Alright, so we're going to have a little long core here. I forgot to mention one thing. If you're switching from the uh, non-electric locker to the electric locker, you are going to need to get a new uh, driver's side CV shaft. So, uh, I was okay with doing that. I went to the, the wrecker to buy this. I ended up buying uh, a shaft as well. So there's a couple you, part numbers on there. You, if you do a little bit of research on uh, the Jeep forums, you'll figure out what you need. Buy a OEM shaft, like I mentioned in the last video. Buy an OEM used shaft out of a vehicle that's at the junkyard, or buy a new one. And you would pay a lot of money for a new one, but you're going to be happy with it. Otherwise, it's going to be a total piece of junk. And in fact, this one was starting to fail anyway, so I didn't really lose out by having to buy a new shaft. I think they're only like $40 at the junkyard anyway. So I'll show you how to check this, if I can get the camera set up. Bear with me. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but when you grasp it, My wrist is twisting instead, but when you grasp it like this and twist it back and forth, there's a, a bit of play in there. So that one was uh, finished for being used anyway. You polish this up with a bit of emery cloth. That sucker there gets really stuck on. So when you're trying to pull it out of the uh, differential, you got to push it in as far as you can and then pull it out really quick. If you're already pulling this way and try to pull, this is just going to bite harder. But it, if you can push it in and get a little bit of momentum, you can, if you're lucky, you can get that thing to pop out. But it's not easy and you'll probably damage the seal like I mentioned. So uh, once again, thank you for watching.